Welcome to the second episode of MC Knitting Adventures. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's great to see you back here again. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. Uh, we are going to talk about knitting and we're going to talk about our adventures when we travel to new places and see new wool shops. And today our adventure is going to take us all the way to St. Thomas, Ontario. A nice little community there. And before we get started though, we're going to talk about what we're wearing. So last time, last episode, um, we talked about May and her love of the Anguli Cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. And she's wearing another one. Um, this is yarn that I um, gave to May for Christmas. It is Wisdom Yarns Naked Sock and it's the Oceanic colorway. And what I did was I put it in a tube that looked like a wine bottle holder. And I gave her the yarn. You tried to... to trick me. I did try to trick you <laughs> and I did a little bit so yes. it was fun. And so what I did in giving her that ball of yarn um, I said to her you have two choices you can either have another cowl or I can make you a new pair of socks and she decided on the cowl and so there it is. I love it another another great knit that you did. I love the colors they're so vibrant and it just brightens you up. Yeah, yeah, and I think it feels nice against your skin, it too. It does. It feels great. It feels very good. A lot of compliments on this one, too. So thank you again, Colleen. You're very welcome. And for myself, I'm wearing the Atwood Shawl, and it is a pattern by Nicole Clark. And some of you will know her as Hugh Loco. She is a yarn dyer, um, and she's a lovely lady, and um, the pattern is brilliant. So the yarn is a Zen Garden uh, Serenity 20, and it is 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, so it feels lovely. Oh, that's and, why it feels so good. And 10% nylon. Now, the one thing I want to mention about this, this is one of the very first things I did um, with more expensive yarn. And I wasn't sure whether I needed one ball or two balls, so I got two. Um, and then as I went, realized I wanted to have two. So the problem is that I didn't understand about alternating skeins. Um, they are hand dyed. It was important to alternate skeins. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see. And at the top, you'll see it's nice and dark blue. And then as you move down, you'll see that it gets lighter and lighter. And so I still love the cowl. I really do like it. Um, but I think if I was going to do it again, I would alternate skeins. So that's something um, to think about when you're going to be doing your knitting. I think that, you know, maybe that wasn't your intention of doing what you did, but I think it turned out really quite well. Um, the colors just kind of blend in together and it's kind of unique. It makes it unique. I like unique. I know. And what I really love about knitting is that every project you do, you learn something new. Whether it's a new stitch, whether it's a new technique, um, there's lots of new things that you learn. So knitting's a great thing. So we're all going to head to St. Thomas. We're going to talk about our adventures there. Um, but first of all, we're going to talk about finished objects. All right, so we're going to talk about finished objects now. And so we have a few on the table. We're going to work our way through. First of all, we're going to talk about this. Um, it is a basket weave cowl. It's a hack of a pattern by Stacy Keitzer. I used Charisma from Michaels. It, um, the pattern itself is free on Ravelry. It's for a long cowl that you would loop twice. And I just wanted May to have something that was easy to pull on over her head. And so I finished that started last and it didn't take too long to and do. it keeps me so warm I love it and I love that it's not really bulky like because you know when you have a winter coat and you have all that bulk this perfect just perfect so thank Good. you for that you're welcome I'm glad you enjoyed that yes thank you all right and on our last episode I mentioned a project bag that I had made when I took a class at knit stitch and so May's going to hold that up it's a drawstring bag so she can pull the drawstring, you'll see what happens. The bottom part here is quilted. Um, so there's just some quilting lines that you do. Um, you box the corners at the bottom. I loved the class. My teacher at Knit Stitch was excellent. And it really is nice to be able to put your project in something that looks good. So I think I'm going to be making more of those. Yeah, this feels so nice. And it's like, like you say, it's got that quilted feel to it. It's thick. And I think it will stand up. 
Like when you stand it up, it stands up. Absolutely. And you can put your knitting in there. Yep. And the other Great thing idea. you can do with a drawstring bag, and a lot of you will know that, is that you can flip it over. It looks like this, and then you have basically a bucket. And you can knit right out of it with no oh, problem. Oh, look at that. That's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> that great job. Good. Yeah, good so part. I really like it. And I'm, as I said, I'm planning to make some more. I bought some more fabric over the holidays and I'm going to make some more. With great. It. So that's good. All right. So the next um, finished object I'm going to talk about is something called a Channeled Colors Brioche Loop and Scarf Pattern. It's by Marcy Drew. Um, it's free on Ravelry. And it is a brioche scarf. So it looks like an accordion. It looks a little bit like an accordion. So the way that this works is you have a main color and that's this dark blue and that is Ultra Alpaca, Alpaca by Barocco. All right, and that's the dark blue. Uh, it's 50% super fine alpaca and 50% Peruvian wool. It's a little rustic. I, th I haven't blocked it yet. I think when I do that, I think it's going to make it a little softer. So that is the color that's the dark blue. And the contrast it. color is Chapel, um Passion for You Ambiente. I'm hoping I'm saying it right. So that's the yarn and it brings the color in. Now the nice thing about this pattern is that first of all it's a great starter for a brioche i uh, took a mentoring class at london yarns and so i took my pattern with me took my yarn with me and i said okay never done brioche before can you help me and so it was great i spent two hours with janet and louise at um, london yarns they were very helpful and so by the time i was heading home i had a really good idea what i was doing I love how soft and cushy um, brioche is. Um, I loved knitting it in the round because it's great. Um, it's a good place to start. Um, and I really am impressed, first of all, with the pattern. And I'm impressed with the teachers at London Yarns because big difference, like big difference for my learning. And here is all that was left of the colored ball. Um, and I'm glad I could use most of it. So I'm really happy with it. I it's like going it. to keep that me nice really and warm. Nice. So really I'm really nice. happy yeah, with very that. Good um, here's just so that you see what the pattern looks like. And yes, I'm really, really happy with that. Oh, great. So in our first episode, I talked about socks a lot. And I talked about heels in socks. That's and right. You're the sock person. I'm the sock You're person. <laughs> and I, I do use a heel flap and gusset. And I'm trying to figure out another heel to try. So I did make this attempt. May has some desert boots she loved. And so I made these for her. Um, I did the contrast heel. It's a German short row heel. First time during Ger German short rows. It's okay. I'm not, I don't know. How do you like that in comparison to the other socks that I've made for I you? I really like, you know, I like the sock. Um, I don't notice that much difference when I put it on. So it, it may be difference when you're knitting it. But for me, putting the socks on, the heel... Uh, feels comfortable just like all the socks that you've knit for me. So okay. I didn't feel any difference at all. But okay. They're great. So thank you for that. They, they go great with my desert boots too. So Good. I'm glad. Yeah. So it's always nice when that happens. That yeah. You like. So um, those are socks are, um, they're super wash wool with a, some nylon in it. Um, it's a cascade sock yarn. So it's lovely and easy to work with and it's easy to take care of. So we were at a yarn store, which we're going to talk about later, um, and we in found... In St. Thomas, I believe. In St. Thomas, absolutely. And we found some yarn that's called Colbassi. It's got cotton, it's got um, bamboo, and it's got silk in it. And they have, lot, they have 50 gram skeins, and um, they have this pattern, and it's called Sock Science 2. So there's the pattern. And it's done by Joan Inglis Jeans. I'm really enjoying these socks. I have to tell you, they're amazing. It was the first time I knit a shorty sock. I love this color at the cuff. Um, it goes and great with blue jeans. It does. And I you, are they comfortable? Very comfortable. Right. So it's a different material that it's made out of. But I think you have enjoyed them. So I did a little different heel. I went back to the heel flap and gusset to try and see if that would work in this and it did um i once again i'm still looking to try a new heel so if you have any ideas for me and any heels that i should try just comment below and um, let me know what the next heel i should try is i've yeah. tried german short row 
trial heel flap and gusset so I'm ready to try a new one. And I just want to say again, I don't notice a difference in the heels. Like I, I know maybe knitting you do, but I don't wearing them, I don't notice any difference at all. Okay. Uh, they're both very comfortable and I really enjoy these socks around okay. the house. So Perfect. thank you again. All right. I just seem to be thanking you for so much. <laughs> well, as I mentioned the other time, you are definitely knit worth yeah. me and I'm so glad that you like them. So that's it for finished objects and next we're going to talk about works in progress. All right, we're going to talk about works in progress. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, I had done a lot of knitting for Christmas and had made lots of socks. Yes, you did. So I thought I'm just going to make something for myself. And so I decided I wanted to make Semplice mitts. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so it's a fingerless uh, mitt and I had purchased some of this yarn. It's called Simply Kriya by Haiku and it's 100% baby alpaca. Oh my goodness, it is so soft. So it comes in these little balls. This is the Spring Meadow colorway and it is so soft and so it squishy is. It's fantastic. and fantastic. Oh my goodness. I wish you so could beautiful. feel this. I wish you could feel this. So may if you want to put what that one on oh, just to nice. try. So that's how it comes out. I've got I guess we could call that a hoe, but that just seems wrong somehow. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's a half-finished object. And I've got the other one on the needles. So I'm really liking it. I have to tell you, it is really slippery. It'll keep you warm, though. Yes, it'll be nice and warm, but the yarn itself is really slippery. So I found when I started the first one, I like to use metal needles, and I thought perhaps I could use bamboo. It might have been, been a little bit better. Part of the reason that I'm using these metal needles is because I was having some difficulty last year. So last year I was knitting so many things and I found that I hurt, I, um, what did I, they call that when that happened to your thumb? What is, is there they, a name for that? Yeah, they called it thumb? trigger thumb. Okay. So I had to not stop knitting, but I had to, um, not knit as much and oh my goodness I realized how much it's a relaxation and a meditative thing for me and I really love to knit. There are studies out to say that uh, knitting has uh, reduced people's blood pressures. Oh that's good. And anxiety, reduced anxiety. So there okay. are, I mean you're not wrong in saying that it is meditative and it is uh, health wise it's supposed to be good for you. Exactly. So mm -hmm. when my thumb was sore I was trying to figure out okay how am I going to get this better so I tried not knitting for a little bit, I tried knitting for 10 minutes, I tried doing all kinds of things and I ended up um, finding out about cubic needles so they are square um, and what that is Probably meant to do yeah it's hard to see maybe I could hold it a little closer right. for you so that's what it looks like mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can see it um, but what it does is instead of having to hold so tight onto something that's uh, circular, like round, that you have a side that you can hold on to so you don't have to hold on quite so tight. And I think it's made a difference to me. I'm now, as you have seen, knitting socks. I'm back to knitting. I still can't knit quite as long as I used to, but then probably I shouldn't be knitting quite as long as I used to. But you to, know so. what? Um, every time that you use these square needles, you always say, I. You appreciate them. Every time you always say, I love these square needles. Yes, so, I absolutely yeah, love them. So if them. anybody that you know has trouble with arthritis or problems with their hands, it's something to think about. So these are the Nova Platina Cubics. Um, and when I get birthday money and Christmas money, lots of times I will order some. They don't have them in all stores. I was going to say, where do you buy those from? Um, there's a store in Toronto that you can get some from. Um, that is Romney Wool. Um, we're going to talk we're about do that. that was one of our one of our ventures. Yeah, so we're going to go to that one. Right. So there's that, or you can order them online. Um, Webs is that yarn store um, in the states, and I've ordered from there, um, and they come fairly quickly. And um, I really have appreciated them very much. And as May says, every time I say, I'm right. still you using do. them. You're very appreciative of those needles. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is my Simply Smiths, and that's my Cubic Needles. Great job on those. Those will keep us warm. This uh, Ontario, London, Ontario weather is very cold. So yeah, right now it's very cold. Put this even under a pair of gloves or a pair of mitts. Golden. I think that will yeah. work. All right, Fantastic. so back to the world of socks. Um, I had shown the May's Shorty Socks. That's that Sock Science 2. And um, we have a friend 
who um, we thought we'd make some short socks for too. This is called Bernat Socks. It is acrylic nylon, and once again, sometimes when you're making socks for somebody else, you want to um, use yarn that they can throw in the dryer, throw in the washer. I see you've used that heel again. Yep, you heel really flap like and gusset, like I do. Heel. I like nice. that one, but I'm, I'm willing to try a new one. Just gotta find okay. it out. I love how this works. It's a knit one row, purl one row, so you actually get the garter stitch. And I love this yarn. It's called, actually, I love the name of it. It's called Surf's Up is the colorway. It looks like a beach. It looks, it looks like an like, ocean. It or... looks like a beach. Yeah. So that's the first one, and I'm working on that, and I have till March to get those done. So I'm going to keep working Perfect. and see what we can do. Yeah. Your, our friend will appreciate those. Absolutely. All right. So the last thing is still this My Sister's Shawl, the Mystery Knit Along. And I can't show it to you because it's a mystery, but I've got I'll give me. you a quick peek. There's How's the quick that? peek. Quick peek. There it is. Just to give you an idea of the colors, but we'll try to and hide how they're most working of the work. together. Yeah. There Looks we go. It's going to come along very nicely. I exactly. Think. The colors that you chose were were just really nice. So perfect. And I'm looking forward to the new clue coming out soon. So um, once that's there, I will do my best okay, to show we'll you what's hide going this on. Now. Yeah, hide it now. We don't want to okay. see it. <laughs> so that's my works in progress right at the moment. And so now we're going to start talking about our adventure. Today we're going to be talking about our adventure that took us to St. Thomas, Ontario. St. Thomas, Ontario has a population of about 40,000 people and the neighboring uh, town is Port Stanley. So you cannot go to St. Thomas without going to the neighboring town, Port Stanley, which has a population of about 2,000 people. But in the summer, I'm sure that number goes up very, very large Absolutely. because uh, it's a little uh, beach town because uh, it it's on Lake Erie, I believe this is the lake it's on, right? It yes, yeah. <laughs> it's on Lake Erie, and uh, it has a lot of little restaurants, and we've actually ate at GT's right on the beach. It's beautiful there, uh, yeah. Lots of cottages, there's golfing, uh, they play volleyball on the beach. It's been a, We had a great day when we were there, so Absolutely. in the summer, of course. <laughs> in the summer. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, it's only about 20 minutes from St. Thomas. I know, so, and the road between Port Stanley and St. Thomas, what's there? Oh, ice cream. Shaw's ice cream. Yes. <laughs> we never we never go to uh, St. Thomas and Port Stanley without having to stop at Shaw's ice cream. So. And what's your favorite? Uh, I usually get, um, you know, the toffee in it. I think with toffee in it. Pralines and cream. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's what we like the best. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what it is. Now, also, you can't go to St. Thomas without talking about Jumbo the Elephant. In 1985, the Barnum Bailey Circus, uh, they were, I don't know how it ended up, but the the elephants ended up on the railway track and unfortunately Jumbo was killed by an oncoming train. Uh, there is a documentary coming on CBC that's called The Nature of Things and it is hosted by David Suzuki and they're going to be looking uh, about Jumbo's bones, they're going to be looking in further to that. Now they did have to get the bones from a museum in New York and they're going to you know, probably take DNA, I'm not a scientist but I'm sure they're going to take some wow, DNA and see maybe really what happens. Yeah, scene. it's going to be really interesting. So um, after about 100 years, in 1985, they erected a large uh, monument of Jumbo. And that's well, the first thing you see when we come into St. Thomas, for the way we come in. And exactly. You, You've taken some great pictures. Yes. Yeah, so you can see pictures when you see them at the beginning and at the end of our uh, podcast. Uh, well, I guess the crew that was doing this filming, they um, when they went to get the bones... Uh, from the New York Museum, I guess they went silent just because of the enormity of them. They were they were massive, and also they had a moment of reverence. It was, mm -hmm. I guess it was quite something, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and it'd be interesting to watch that. So it's an interesting story. Uh, also in St. Thomas, they have a water park. Water. We went there this summer. It was absolutely awesome park. It had a little uh, waterworks park. Waterworks park. You're you're also good with the names. I like that. I appreciate that. <laughs> no and it was a great park. It was a very steep hill going down to that mm -hmm. park. Uh, you, I don't know if they'd want to go there in the winter. Well, I know we wouldn't. Maybe a lot of people <laughs> probably do that in the winter. Right. But it was a very quite a very steep hill down to that park. But once you got down there, it was absolutely. It's beautiful. There's lots beautiful. of plants. Mm -hmm. They take really good care of it. Um, and there is the splash pad and water time for the kids. So right. it's good. Right. So also uh, in St. Thomas, there is a place called Katie Van. It's a winery that we have gone to mm -hmm. on several occasions. Mm -hmm. They do weddings and they do um, tours, wine tours. And we've gone there for a nice brunch uh, outside in the gardens. Uh, 
you know, and also about four or five times a year they have uh, concerts and they brought in some people from Detroit, they have a Motown and they have a dance floor that's probably about an acre big um, and it's massive and you sit out there with your umbrellas and you bring in some food, you're allowed to bring in all your own food and your picnic right. and your lawn chairs. And you can buy your wine and beer there. So you bring your picnic and you buy your yeah, and it's it's just a great place to hang out with friends, listen to some great music, and we've had nothing but a great time there. Yeah, so absolutely, that's, that's right. So we highly recommend Katie Van, and we should do that again this year. Absolutely, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, also in St. Thomas, coming up uh, is a Railway City Arts Crawl. That's what they call it, the Railway City Arts Crawl, and it's February 23rd to February 24th. And uh, lots of different venues, then you buy a pass, and you go around uh, the city of St. Thomas to view different arts and different... Part. Now, is the Little Red Mitten part of that? No, absolutely. The Little Red Mitten is totally part of that, and it, that that's something I'm glad you brought that up. That's very good, yeah. And so they will be there. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So uh, a great place to visit St. Thomas. Uh, we are getting a little bit, when it adventures, we are, you know, getting a little bit more further from our <laughs> destination in London, Ontario. <laughs> but a uh, great place to visit St. Thomas, and I think you would enjoy that uh, Little Red Mitten store that we love so much okay. and that we go to quite a bit. So, I'm going to talk yeah, about the Little Red Mitten. for sure, absolutely. Right. So, it is um, at 86 Talbot Street in St. Thomas. Um, it is an amazing store. You go in and there are a series of rooms and every room has a different uh, weight of yarn. Um, and the colors and the type of yarn, they're mm -hmm. amazing. And they have so many samples. And if you look up at the above, they've got them. They've got them numbered so you can ask what it is, what yarn is it they are they using. And it's absolutely amazing. Um, the yarn that I had to do those Simply Smiths that I mentioned earlier in this episode, um, I got it there. And so once again, it was a sample. I fell in love with the sample and then away we went. Um, so it's great. Um, I, there are so many uh, kinds of yarn that they have. So they have Sweet Georgia, they have Zen Garden, they have Madeleine Tosh, they have lots of Cascade, lots of different sock yarns. Um, it is just absolutely amazing. It is. Um, and I could spend days there. Yes. The, and the people were very nice. They, they uh, are, they're they, great. I asked if we could take some photographs and they were very, you know, very pleasant and said absolutely not a problem. So, and also Jumbo is outside the door. Like, so if you go to Little Red Mitten, you can't miss Jumbo. Yeah, it's just down the street it's a little just, bit. Yeah. And I'm actually um, going to be taking a brioche basics class there uh, in February. And I know that I showed you my scarf that was brioche and you think, oh, yep, she knows what she's doing, but I'm not sure I know what I'm doing. So I'm really looking forward to taking a class there. I know they have lots of times that you can go sit and knit there, um, but this is going to be exciting for me because I've never taken a class at Little Redmond right. and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, we always love our adventure in St. Thomas, so if you get an opportunity... You know, I'd highly recommend St. Thomas. Great little town. All right. And so the next thing we're going to talk about is my souvenirs. Oh. What I what I purchased at the Little Red Mint. We're going to talk about um, my souvenirs. We could call that retail therapy. We could call it acquisitions. Um, stash. stash. Don't they call that a stash? Well, I'm building a stash. I'll put it that way. So, um... If you recall the socks that I made for me, actually they're right here, so I'm going to hold them up. So these socks were made with that kobasi, and um, I love those socks, and I bought enough yarn so I could make a second pair. So the light blue, I bought enough, and the dark blue. And what happened was May's mum really liked the socks, and so I decided that she for did. Christmas I would make yeah, her a pair. She really liked them, yeah. So I made them very much the same as May's. I, I changed the stripe pattern up a little bit, but I did. So when we were in Little Red Mitten, I thought, okay, I'm going to go and buy myself some yarn, and then I can make some socks that are similar. So we have already established that purple is one of my favorite colors, yeah. and so when you see this, you will not be surprised. So what I bought was purple and black, of the Kobasi by Haiku. Um, black is the black colorway. The other, the purple one is called Violet. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is use a little bit more of the purple and I should be able to get a pair of shorty socks for myself. Oh, those will be nice. Those I know, will be very I'm really nice looking stuff. forward yeah. to it. And those colors are great. So I really, And really it's nice that you're making something for yourself because you don't often do that. Colleen often makes um, things for everybody else and forgets about herself. So I really, I'm really glad that you're gonna do that for yourself. Yeah. 
So the other thing that I got, because I don't always just buy yarn, is I got um, two of these. I'll let you hold that one. And so I got a black one and I got a brown one. And what these are, are um, it's by Jewel. And the designs are that there's a screw on the back and then there's a piece of leather for front and back. And what you do is you basically put it on your shawl to hold it place. So it's like a shawl pin, but it's a little bit more funky. So I was... Sometimes I wear things that go with black. Sometimes I wear things that go with brown. This one's called Chestnut, and so that's why I purchased those books. Now, these all come from uh, Little Red Mittens, that Yes, correct? absolutely. Everything okay. that I'm going to see will class come from Little Red Mittens. All right. Nice. So those are something a little bit different, but I'm looking forward to using those. So when we were there over the holidays, um, and the weather per held, we had a day that we could yeah, go, we and it was day. perfect. We had a fun day. We also exactly. fun when we go on these adventures. It's fun. So there was a koi goose scarf pattern, and it just required one skein, one 50 gram skein of yarn. And so Mae chose this color, which is called plum. Nice. And usually that's the color I choose, but I think that's going to be good for her. I, it'll be beautiful yeah, on you. Yeah. So the scarf is basically, it's a 36 by 18 inch and it's a triangle. And then it'll just be a knot at the back. So not too much bulk for me, as we've talked about, she doesn't like that. And then this is mine. It doesn't have a colorway name, um, but it's got blue and purple and black and gold. And it's got all kinds of colors in it. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to make myself and one I think of those as well. And I think you'll yeah. look great in that. So that's what that's going to be. Nice. All right, so um, this is a surprise for me, and she doesn't I see know there's anything brown hanging about up. <laughs> this. So, take a look. See what you have. Oh, nice. That'll be fantastic. I love that. Good. So you, those shorty socks that she loves so much, I managed somehow to be able to purchase that without her knowing. Oh, nice. And so I'm hoping that you'll really like those colors. I really like those colors. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Wow. Look at, look at this. That's a stash. <laughs> there you go. All right. And the last thing we picked up was some Ultra Pima cotton. It's Cascade and it's nice and soft. And I'm going to explain to you why we did that. So um, one of our good friends um, ended up last year with uh, breast cancer um, and she had to have a mastectomy. And um, so I knew that she was gonna be needing something to help her. And when I was in um, one, a yarn store, they, I saw this, which is called knitter knock, knittedknockers.org. And so what it is, it's a knitting pattern to actually make a yarn prosthetic so that um, on the side where you've had your breasts removed, you can put in this um, knitted knocker is what it's called. So sometimes when somebody that you know and love is having difficulty and you don't know what else to do, I knit. Yeah. So it's the first time ever in my life I've knit somebody a breast. A breast. <laughs> and I did. And what the feedback was, was it is light, it's comfortable, it's soft against the skin. There are a number of stores in the London area that are depots for knitted knockers. So you can, there's two ways to do it. You can either buy the yarn and just give it to those people at the store. And then what they will do is knit them up. Or you can knit up one of these prosthetic breasts and give it to them. And then they will ship it to the, um, to the knittedknocker.org uh people and then they will distribute them to those for people who need them you know what a great organization to do that, that that's fantastic i know the person that you did this for is so appreciated and actually yeah. requested a uh, different color because it comes in different colors exactly uh, black uh, beige and pink maybe pink there's purple pink. there's all different yeah. kinds of colors and that's part of it making it a little bit more than just a prosthetic right so yeah. some people want to embrace what's going on to, with them and they just want to have some fun with yeah. it and so as a result that's what they would do with a different color so um, it does make you feel good that you know in a time like that that you could do something and that was really nice for you to do that to her friend and I know she she really appreciated what you did so thank right. you too that was nice yeah I was glad that I could do yeah. that for her yeah. So if you have time, and if you so choose, you can go on to www.knittedknocker.org, knittedknockers.org. Um, I'll 
put that in the show notes and you can go on the site, you can get the patterns. There's a crochet pattern, there's a double pointed needle pattern, there's a magic loop pattern, there's all different ways of doing this. Um, and then, you know, help somebody out. Not everybody has somebody who can right. knit for them and I think yeah, it would be great to help great them out. Idea. Yeah. And everybody's been touched by somebody that's had cancer. Like, I don't think there's anybody that I know that hasn't been touched by a relative or a friend that's had cancer. So Absolutely. Yeah. And it's great to be able to help out. Yeah. So we've had, uh, we had a great time going to St. Thomas. We did. Um, we always have fun together though. We just we laugh. Do. And we have fun. <laughs> yes, we do. We get in trouble. And we usually end up venturing to a Starbucks somewhere. I know somewhere. St. Thomas doesn't have one. But, but on the way but home. But on the way home, yeah, we always absolutely. end up going to a Starbucks. So it's one of our other favorite uh, places to exactly, go. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us on this episode. Um, Please feel free to comment below. Let us know what you're thinking. Once again, I'm still looking for that sock heel, so if you can help me out with that, um, and I'll know where to start as far as that goes. Um, May, thanks again for being on this you're adventure welcome. with me. You're welcome. Until next time. All right. You take care. Yeah.